So you're thinking about selling books on Amazon, which is awesome, but now you're not really sure where to get the books, you know, how to source them, you know, how to keep your inventory always stocked so you don't run out. Well, in this video, I wanna share with you some of my tips and tricks and some of my sources that I use to keep books coming into my inventory. Let's get started. Hey guys, this is Lenny from Simon Says Resale, where I go ahead and share my experiences selling on Amazon, specifically books, but I go ahead and you know share my stories and, and kind of the apps and the, the programs that I use, and maybe even do some tutorials on them. So I really hope you enjoy the videos and definitely check out uh, my YouTube channel. But in this video, we're actually gonna talk about sourcing books. Where do I get my books? Where do most people get books when they sell on Amazon, or pretty much anywhere? Um, it's a big question because you know it, it's kind of tough to, to hone in on a specific place because everyone's different. You know, for example, my top place that I get books from might not be the same for you or someone else. Uh, so I'm gonna go through the list of the different places that I use, starting with the, you know, my number one choice and just kind of going down from there. So the first place that I go to is Goodwill, you know, a thrift store and, and or any equivalent. But the Goodwill is, you know, pretty well known or in the U.S. Maybe there's other store names that are like that, but. Fortunately for me, I have about 10 to 12 Goodwills in my area. I live in, in South Florida, so it's it's pretty easy. I have the closest one to me is maybe five minutes away, and there's probably a good eight to 10 in a 20 mile radius for me, so that makes my life a lot easier. But that might not be the same for you. So as I go through the list here, think about the different places, the different sources that I'm mentioning, and see how convenient that is for you. And I'll go into an example on, on one person I'm talking to right now. He's asking for my help, you know, we chat every now and then. Um, he's in a particular situation, which you might be in as well, so I wanna share that with you too. But the first place is Goodwill. Why? Mainly because there's so many around me, right? There's eight to 12, you know, in a very, very short distance for me. Uh, makes it very easy for me to go to. But not only the distance, the Goodwill experience itself is is relaxing. You know, there's no pressure, there's no one over your shoulder asking you questions. Um, it's a really kind of calm place to go, especially if you're starting out. So if you have Goodwills, you know, go to Google Maps, go on your phone, search for you know, Goodwill. And then when you search for them, there's a few different kinds. There's the Goodwill donation centers or maybe the drop-off places. Those you want to kind of do a little more investigation on. Maybe when you search for them, call them, see if, ask them, because what you're looking for are the um, superstores or the stores themselves, you know, the retail stores, if you want to call them that, where you actually go in and they have books and clothes and stuff like that because some of the Goodwill listings when you search may be donation centers which is just like a big trailer which you can't go and search for books on in. So um, do a little research before you go out driving around and so I don't want to waste your time. But you want to look for the Goodwill Superstores and the Goodwill Outlet Stores. Those are probably the best two Goodwill type of stores. Um, the Goodwill Stores, um, they, have, they have two things all the time, books and clothes for sure. So you want to probably start off with books because that's kind of what I'm kind of getting into. So when you go there, you'll probably have a couple hundred books you can easily look at. And it makes it so much easier uh, for you because there's no one bothering you. It's very relaxed. No one really cares what you're doing. You know, only thing I do ask is you may kind of wind up, you know, maybe someone might say something. If you're looking at books and you're pulling them out and you're looking at them, put them back. Make it nice and neat, you know, because people do spend most of their day putting books on the shelves, you know, people that work there and, you know, making sure they're nice and neat. So make sure you do that. Um, just be kind, you know, be considerate. But the books are pretty, pretty good condition for the most part. I mean, I, I, everything good and above, um, very few books, maybe almost no books with mildew or mold. Um, some might have stickers, some might have some writing in them, but that's okay. You can, you can easily sell those for a certain condition, depending on how it is. But Goodwill's a great resource um, to, to scout at because, it's easy, you know, no one's bothering you, there's no pressure. Um, what else can I say about that? But Goodwills are, um, so do some research, see if there's any Goodwills around you. Um, if there are, go one day, not really going to look for books, but just go, take a look at it, you know, see where the books are, see what kind of books they are. And I'll do another video on what type of books you should be looking for, but this video is just mainly on, on where I source. So Goodwill's my top choice. Is it yours? I don't know, you gotta do some research. Um, my second choice would be um, probably Salvation Army, I think. Um, Salvation Army is very similar to Goodwill, and they may have you know, cheaper prices. Um, this, there's only two Salvation Armies around me, so it's, it's not my top choice. I'm just kind of keeping, I guess, in the, in the category that, I, that I'm in, thrift stores, I guess. Um, 
Salvation Army is a good resource. I don't go there as often because they don't have as many books. And the books aren't as good condition as Goodwill. But the Salvation Army is another place because there's only two, but they're pretty close to me. So if I'm driving home from work or have a couple uh, minutes to spare, you know, if I'm going out to run an errand, I'll just stop by and check it out. So Salvation Army. And you may have some around you and check them out. You never know. Um, yard sales and garage sales. So yard sales and garage sales are a great resource. You can find a pretty good amount of books depending on where you live. Um, so I live in kind of a, you know, a, a, not a city area. This is more residential. So any streets that I go down on, on Saturday and Sunday are usually pretty good. And uh, I can probably, like, right now it's a Saturday, um, I can probably leave my house in the morning around 9 o'clock and I can guarantee at least six garage sales easily without even thinking about it. I just live in that type of area, which is good for me. Now, the only reason why I don't go out that much is because it takes time. You know, I have a family. I don't want to spend half my Saturday morning going to garage sales. But if there's some time when I can do it, I'll definitely do it. But they're good because, you know, there's, there's for around me, there's, there's a good amount of them. Um, the only issue with garage sales is it might be uncomfortable for some people. Some people might be like a little more introverted or shy. You know, going in front of a, a stranger and looking at their stuff may be kind of weird to you. It's just a different experience. That's why I say Goodwill is just easier to start out with, just to get familiar with the books and the process. But the garage sales uh, can be very rewarding as well because uh, you can get books very cheap there most of the time. Um, and you never know because maybe like two or three times when I go out to garage sales, I'll stumble across an estate sale. So that's another kind of uh, item in my bull in my list for today's video is you know go through the garage sales yard sales and also estate sales so an estate sale is basically there's someone's house they need to leave the house very quickly and they're selling everything in the house everything you know you go and you walk in the house may be a mess it may be organized there may be prices on everything so what you do is you walk around the house and you see what there is to buy and I usually go right for the books. I'll ask the person that's running the thing. I'm like, hey, do you have any books? Yeah, sure. They're in. They're scattered across the house. So I'll just walk around the house. And I found some pretty good books there. Um, but there's not an estate sale every single weekend. So it's kind of like just a bonus when I go out. So the yard sales and the garage sales and the estate sales you know, require me to go out. I don't really know what's going to happen. I don't know how many they're going to be. So it's kind of a guess. It's kind of a mystery. So that's the only issue, I guess. One of the issues with garage sales and yard sales and those types of sales is you don't know. You don't know how many they're going to be. You don't know how long you're going to be out there. And maybe I go out one morning and there's only one. Maybe I go out one morning and there's too many. I don't have enough time. So I do that kind of when I can, but I don't really uh, focus too much on, on those types of sales. Um, but they can be rewarding. Like I said, you can get books you know, under a dollar most of the time. You can negotiate easier because the Goodwills and the Salvation Armies, you really can't negotiate. They're pretty pretty strict in their prices. Um what I've done at Goodwills is I'll walk into a Goodwill that has maybe 800 books and I'll spend maybe an hour or two scanning a bunch of books and let's say I pull out 100 books. I'll pull them aside and then I'll go and ask the manager. I'll ask for the manager at Goodwill. I'm like, hey manager, you know, um, I'm a book collector. I, I, I pulled out 100 books that I'm interested in. Would you give them to me for a dollar a piece? Now I say a dollar a piece because usually at Goodwills they're a dollar for paperback and two dollars for hardcover and three dollars for like specialty books like cookbooks and the big table coffee table books. So I'm like, you know what? I can do one for everyone for a dollar. That's fine. So I asked the person, the manager. She really wasn't having it. She didn't really give in to my negotiation. So I'm like, hey, no one. I'm not going to cause any beef because I'll be back here again. And I asked, and that was it. You know, the worst they can say is no. So I bought them one and two dollars each, which wasn't a big deal. I still got a pretty good deal. You know, the profit was, I think the net profit on those was a couple hundred dollars and I spent maybe less than a hundred, I think it was, depending on how many books I got. But it was, it was a pretty good, um, it was a pretty good haul. Uh, but anyway, so there are some differences in the different types of places to source. Um, the other thing you can do, which really works for me, is Craigslist. Um, what you can do, I know um, other people use this tactic. I think it Reezy, Reezy Resales uses uses this too. So I think I got this from him. Thank you, Reezy. Um, is go to a website. Um, if then, if this then that. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. If this then that. Um, go to that website. What you do is you sign up the account. It's free, and you kind of attach another website to it, um, like Craigslist. And you, what you do is you go to Craigslist, you search for books, and then you see the URL that comes up. You copy that URL, you put that into if this then that, 
and then every time a new book is posted on Craigslist, you get an email. So you don't have to sit there and look through Craigslist all day, all morning, all night to look for books around the area. So that's what I do. So I get an email every time a new book posting comes up, whether it's you know South Florida, there's three different counties here. So whichever of the three counties a book comes in on Craigslist, I get an email. I take a look at it. Oh, you know, maybe this is too far for me. Maybe this is like two hours away. I may or may not go depending on the book. So if this, then that is a great website. You can hook up your Craigslist um, listings to that. So when a Craigslist post comes up from someone, you get an email. It makes your life a hell of a lot easier. So look into that. So Craigslist is great. I've gotten many, many awesome books on Craigslist. Um, one time I got a book or a bunch of books. I paid 50 bucks for eight books, I think it was. But they were pretty new, like college level books. And I at least made $400 on that so awesome ROI but you don't find those that often but they're there but most of the time on Craigslist some people f are selling you know they'll post individual books some people will post bulk of books so what I do is what you can do when you look at the listings you'll start seeing that if there's individual books they're posting some of them look as, as far as the person posting them you'll see like they're the same person so I'll click on one and I'll try to contact the seller saying hey I noticed you posted about 10 books um, how many do you have total? Maybe they have 50 that they haven't posted yet. So I kind of talk to them through Craigslist, whether it's email or text messages or whatever. But Craigslist is a great place to go. It's just another source. Um, other places that I do source as well, <laughs> when I first started off, I, um, I used Craigslist, but I also, what was it? I, I think it was Craigslist. I found people were posting, uh, selling pallets, you know, Gaylords, they call them, of books, you know, the big plat, the big um, pallets. Um, if you go to my, my Facebook page, uh, Simon Says Resell, and you look at the pictures, there's a picture of a pallet. Um, within a pallet, you can probably get about 800 to 1,200 books. So this guy was selling about 15 pallets of books, um, about 40, 40, 40 to 45 minutes north of me. Um, so I called him up, you know, I said, Hey, you know, I'm interested in books. You know, I, I sell books. Um, I think they were selling for $200 for a pallet of books, which at the time, this is when I first, first started. I was like, awesome. 200 book, $200 for almost a thousand books. Let's say on average, that's awesome. Let's go. You know, it's less than a dollar a book, which is kind of my goal. Um, so I drive up there. I took my wife's car. She has a pathfinder, you know, it has the three rows. I can put them all down. So if I, I, I went there. Um, expecting to buy a lot of books and I I, um, I got there and I saw the pallet the guy had again like 15 pallets it was awesome but I only had room for maybe one so I bought a pallet the thing with pallets is you don't know what you're getting because you can't sit there and individually pick out the books you're more give me the whole box kind of thing um, so what I did is I, I put the seats down in my wife's car I loaded my wife's car with as many books as I could at the time I got about half a pallet in my wife's car before the Pathfinder started to sink. So I drove home, unloaded all of them, went back the next day, drove back up there, put the rest of the pallet in the back of the car, and then drove home. Um, that was my first experience with a pallet. Um, it really, you don't, really don't know what you're going to get. I wasn't super excited once I got home and looked at everything or as I was pulling it out because what happened was there were about... Whew, they were about um, maybe 400 calendars in there. So it wasn't just books. It was books and calendars. Now, this was, if you looked at my previous videos, I only started doing Amazon. Um, I, I signed up my seller account on uh, November 11th, 2016. So not that long ago. So I did this whole pallet thing um, December, beginning of December. So I really wasn't that experienced with it. But I want to share this with you just to kind of give you some insight. So the... The pallet I got had about three, four hundred calendars from 2016. So it was December 2016. So the year's almost over, and I have 400 calendars for a year that's almost over. Wasn't too excited. You know, I talked to the guy. I'm like, "What is this? You know, how do I? You know, I, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna nudge him too much because I get what I pay for, and it really isn't appropriate to kind of get too into it with him." So. Um, I didn't too much, but I kind of asked the question, what am I going to do with these? And he goes, well, there is a market for that. You know, some school teachers do buy older calendars for the pictures. I'm like, you know what? Whatever. So long story short, I get home. I sort everything out. I threw everything out that, that or I recycled everything that wasn't good. Like maybe it's ripped to hell or has mold or mildew, whatever. So I kind of got rid of those things. So when all the dust settled, 
I winded up with about 600 books and like 400 calendars. Is that a good haul? Technically, it could be because I only paid 200 bucks and it still is pretty good pricing for it. So I'm not super upset, but I know I could have done better somewhere else maybe. So, um, so there were about 600 books and I think the profit for that was, you know, over a thousand dollars, I think. I don't remember. It's been a long time. You know, it's been a month and a half and I've processed at least 2,000 books since then. But the long story short is buying books and pallets and Gaylords is another source. Um, just try to be careful as much as you can. Now, that was my first one. Now, I have I've gotten pallets and, and, and Gaylords after that that have been much better. Um, I have a contact at a distributor and a person that collects books for recycling. Um, he's a director of salvage. That's kind of his title. It's kind of cool. But I can go to him whenever I want. So it's not like I'm waiting for an ad on Craigslist. They're kind of constantly throwing books around, and he always has them. And what he sells them, he recycles them. So they're basically they're books at the end of their kind of cycle for that company. So they kind of get rid of them, and they recycle them, and they, they sell them. So... I can go to him, I can call him up right now and say, hey, I want a pallet or two. And I'll go ahead and set my time up and do that. Now, the only thing, pallets are great because you get a lot of books for a little bit of money, which is awesome. You know, putting aside, you don't know what you're actually getting. But overall, the 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 expense is good. It's cheap. It's not much of an expense. But the other part of it is the time to process and other additional expenses. For example... Not that first example, because I use my wife's car, which I'll probably never do again, because I can only fit about a half of a pallet in there. But the second and third and fourth time that I got books, pallets, I rented a U-Haul truck, which was was a good idea. I mean, I, I, I didn't have to use my own car. I got a bigger truck that can hold a lot more. So I had rented a U-Haul truck. This was my first time at my new guy. I rented a U-Haul truck, expecting to buy one pallet for $50. $50 for one pallet. I was like, whoa, that's an amazing deal. So I bought a U-Haul truck, I rented a U-Haul truck, um, went there, I actually bought two pallets instead of one because I can fit two and they're only 50 bucks so each, so why not? So I spent $100 on about 2,000 books, that's kind of what it worked out as. You know, they weigh the pallet before they give it to you, it was just under 1,000 pounds, it was like 998 pounds, so almost a ton I think, so a lot of books. My wife thought I was crazy, um, but anyway, got a good deal. 100 bucks for 2,000 bucks. Why the hell not? Um, so I, I, they had used a forklift. They put the two pallets of books on the U-Haul truck, came home, unloaded all the books. It took me about two hours, put the U-Haul truck back, came home, and then kind of sorted through all them. And I have a whole process, which I'll go through later, specifically to buying books in bulk that I do. Um, but again, long story short with that is it can be very profitable. So definitely look into that, um, the buying books at Pallet and stuff like that. So those are kind of my, my top, you know, three or four or five uh, places to get books. Of course, there's fam there's friends and family, you know, hopefully you don't have to buy them too much. I'd use flyers. Uh, I made flyers and put around my neighborhood, so maybe do some marketing like that. Um, but there are many different ways to get the books. It's just a matter of what's best for you. Now, again, if you have Goodwills and you have a car and it's possible to do that, go ahead and do it. If you have Salvation Armies, do that. If you want to rely on Craigslist, that, do that too. If you're able to do everything, that's amazing. Um, now, the other bonus thing that I want to mention too is I did all this myself in the very beginning, but as I wanted to kind of build my company and build my business, um, I started to back off from sourcing books myself. So what I do now is I actually pay um, book sourcers um, to go out and get books for me, and I pay them per book. And I'll make a, a, a individual unique video just on that process. But long story short with that is I create an ad on Craigslist. I'm saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm someone that sells books online, blah, blah, blah. I'm looking for book scouters. Um, I'll pay you $2.50 a book based on the criteria that is met and it's approved, blah, blah, blah. So what I do is I use my uh, FBA scan app and I have a video on how to set up triggers on FBA scan for the book scouters. But I... I, what I do is I, I put the ad on Craigslist, I get people to interview, and then um, I explain the situation to them, and we meet, and I put the FBA scan app on their phone. I pay for it with my, my money. I use the $9.95 uh, lowest plan. They get unlimited scans with FBA scan. 
and then I kind of show them how to scan the books and I show them how to look at the books visually to make sure they're okay and I send them on their way and there's no quota there's no you know Lenny looking over your shoulder saying I need this many books a week it's whatever they want to do just as long as they're I'm making money um, I'm making more than ten dollars a month because that's kind of how much it is so long story short with that is um, I've been pretty successful I have almost ten book scouters right now they're constantly getting books and they're all over my area and also maybe a county or two north of me so I'm not going I have I honestly haven't been to a goodwill myself in maybe two three weeks um, because I'm constantly getting books from them every week um, how many books well let's say one guy um, he's a good, pretty good friend of mine um, I got him involved in this he gives me easily a hundred books a week without even thinking I have a college student um, looking to make some extra cash she's given me at least a hundred books as well I have a single, mo two single mothers, in a county above or north of me, that are both bringing in you know, maybe at least 50 books a week, depending on their schedule. So, it's a process that I've gotten from watching videos and stuff like that. I think Nathan, I don't remember his last name. I apologize, but there is another YouTube channel, someone named Nathan. Um, I don't remember his last name, but he kind of started that whole process, and I've kind of just tweaked it into my own and made it my own. So, thank you for that, Nathan. Um, but it's worked out very well because you know, I have a family, I have a baby coming, a third child coming, so I don't have that much time to go out on the weekends and do this stuff. But I do look at Craigslist, I'll do jump into someone's, um, I'll do reach out to someone on Craigslist saying, hey, I saw your post, you know, let's meet up, you know, I'll give you the money for the book. So I use every source I can imaginable and possible, but um, this book sourcing thing, you know, basically they're, I'm hiring them as independent contractors, which is great. Um, you know, I am paying a premium for the books, $2.50. But the way the triggers are set up in the app, I always make money. Whether it's a dollar or more, I always make money when it comes to this stuff because the way I set up the triggers. So um, there's more into that. If you look at my FBA scan video, you'll see exactly how the triggers I set up. And there's a cool little hidden feature in the app where, you know, if you're familiar with the scanning apps, you see everything. You see the profit, you see the, the different prices and the offers. And I don't want my scanners to be like, well, this book is selling for... 20 bucks and I'm buying it for a dollar goodwill why is Lenny making all the money I mean yes there's that you know thought that they'll probably have so to reduce that is in the app you can hide all that stuff so they don't see anything they just see like a yes or no buy or no or don't buy so which makes it really cool and perfect for me um, but enough about that so the video I really hope has helped you guys out um, again, many places to source from. There's probably, I'm sure there's more, but that's just kind of the ones that come to the top of my head. But definitely do some research. And not only do some research, go out yourself and, you know, look look at the Goodwills in your area. Look at the Salvation Armies. You know, go to garage sales. Just the experience. Go ahead and do that. Um, they can be very rewarding. Um, and you never know what you're going to find. So, um, I thank you guys for watching. You know, definitely, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe if you haven't. You know, I'll be putting out more videos on, on my experiences, some tips and tricks, and additional how-to videos on how to use some apps and applications that I use, and also some of the equipment that I use as well, like my packaging um, supplies and my label machine and all this other stuff. So thank you again, and have a great day.